Okay, we've gone through the mechanics of uh, how to do a simple join between two tables. Also want to say here, I've been using the term entity and table interchangeably, and so I'm not going to distinguish between the two any anymore. So when you hear me use the term entity, I'm referring to a table. Uh, I prefer to use the term entity. Okay, types of joins. Let's go over and do a quick review. So what you've seen is the syntax for joins is, is pretty straightforward. We're going to be joining on a foreign key to a primary key. And uh, we'll be showing you how to de make that determination. It's my recommendation that you use join syntax instead of joining in your where clause. So as you look at SQL code, you may be exposed to other colleagues who do it within a where clause. So for example, in the query that I just showed you, we could write the same query and put the join statement down in the where clause. And this statement right here is the equivalent of this statement up here. A couple reasons I don't like to do joining down in the where clause. The first reason is what we're doing is we're mixing join logic with row restriction and it makes it as our queries become more robust kind of hard to understand and visually see and differentiate between the two. The second reason I don't like to do it is here, if I want a left join, I decide, oh, I need a left join, I put the verb left in front and I have a left join. Down here, there is no equivalent. So what invariably happens is I'm going to end up with join logic down in my where statement, join on up front, and it just becomes very cumbersome and, and, and kind of kludgy for doing it. So don't like it for that reason. So my recommendation is when you're joining entities, always use join statement to do so. Next is, how do I know what the tables are to join? In the first example, well, I just gave you that information. But how do I know what the tables are to join? Well, there's two ways that I can know. If the database was built using what's called DRI, or Declarative Referential Integrity, I can understand inherently what the relationship between the tables are. And DRI is a technique that one can use at the database level to say these tables are related to these tables on these columns. Typically it's not used, but it's one means. The second means, and this should be a means that's always available to you, and if it's not, I would say then there's a problem with who's delivering the database to you, and that is through the use of ER or entity relationship diagrams. Now, let's talk about entity relationship diagrams. An entity relationship diagram, the, the, the function of an entity relationship diagram is to tell you what the relationship is between the two entities. Is it is table A and table B? What's their relationship? Is it a one-to-one? -one? Is it a one-to-many? Is it a many-to-many? -many? And what is the cardinality between the re relationship? What is the relationship? How are these table? How do I join these tables? What are the keys, or what are the the columns that I would use to join these two entities together? So it's to determine table cardinality, and table cardinality is really a fancy term to define these three things. What is the relationship between the entities that I'm trying to join to one another? So let's look at an example and get some hands-on together doing that. So we'll start by looking with a one-to-one -one relationship. And I want to talk about logical entities. You'll, you'll hear, and you may have heard the buzzword, well, do you know how to do logical modeling or physical modeling in terms of database design and, and things like that? Well, a logical model is a model that 
whose goal is to express the relationship between two entities. So we're going to be, for our exercise, looking at relating the patient table to the facility table. And the logical relationship between those tables is that a patient is assigned to a primary facility. That is the logical relationship between those two entities. Now the physical relationship, or our ER diagram that we would get, is going to tell us that that relationship is a one-to-one -one and that the foreign key in the facility table is this column that relates back to this column in the patient table. So an entity relation diagram is going to express the relationship between two columns and it should tell us the relationship type of the cardinality, that it's a one-to-one. -one. Now if the ER diagram doesn't tell us the relationship, we can actually determine what the relationship is on our own. As you look at an entity relationship diagram, you're, what you're going to note is that the primary key the columns that make up the primary key of a given table are going to be expressed by showing the columns underlined. That's the typical convention. And a primary key can consist of one or more columns in the table. And again, what's the purpose of, the, of a primary key within a table? Well, the purpose is to guarantee the uniqueness of the row. So as we look at the facility table, we note that the primary key is this one column, facility PK, that we're joining back to this column in the patient table. Well, in the patient table, that column for any given row, I only have one column that I can store the data, so obviously the relationship on this side is one. Since I'm joining specifically to this column which actually represents the primary key of that table guaranteeing the uniqueness I know that my relationship between the two is one-to-one. -one. And so how do I know that the join is one-to-one? -one? Well I can ascertain it through the technique that I just showed you through a little forensics or the ER diagram is going to tell me what the relationship is. Either or. Now let's uh, transition and we're going to join the patient to the facility table. So let's head on over here and let me close these out. So we're starting fresh and you, I would like you to work along with me as always. So you should have your workbench up, if not pause the video, and so we can work together. Let's look at the first thousand rows in the patient table. And what we're going to do is we're going to join the patient table to the facility table. And this is our key that we're going to be joining on. And let's have a look at the facility table. We'll look at the first thousand rows there and we'll see there's the facility table. And what we're going to do is we're going to join the two tables together and we're going to return back the patient's last name, their first name, and the facility foreign key. And the whole purpose of us joining the table in this case together is really we want to resolve the key. So in other words, if I just write a report that pulls back the last name and the first name in the facility foreign key, well that's just a number. That's not really expressive. And so we're going to write a query where I want the patient's last name, their first name, but I also want to see the facility name. So my goal is to return the, the name of the facility. So that's what we're going to do now. First things first, and I'm going to, we're going to take, let's take the patient table again so we can refer back to that and get the first thousand rows. We'll use the beautifier. And let's just do this where 
the patient, PK. Is less than or equal to five. Up, oh. the old semicolon got by the old semicolon. Oh, okay. And let's get our columns. And so we can see, let's look at the facility FK. And so this is the record set want we want back. Now let's let's do our, our join. And a join goes where? Between the from and the where statement. So we're going to join from the healthcare database the facility table on the facility dot pk equal to the facility fk. So facility FK equal facility PK. And let's run that. And notice I've joined the table, but I haven't got anything back. Well, let's bring back, just so you can see, the facility PK. and the name column. Okay, so you see we brought it back and you can see our join statement and work, bring that back, what have you. Next, and we can we can remove these. We can remove these out. So as you can see, we've now brought back the data set. We've joined our tables. We've brought the data set back. And what's what's kind of neat about a join is we get what's called uh, what I would like to what I like to call attribute or column explosion. And with that, what I mean by that is we because we've joined these two entities together, we can select any column from either table. So we can bring back any column we want from either table. Now one other thing, as you're joining tables together, that it's a good ha habit and practice to get into is qualifying your, your column names. And qualifying them by defining the actual table name. So table name dot column name that we're looking, that we're looking at. And the reason for doing that, well, there's there's a couple couple reasons. The reason for doing that is it makes your query much more readable by others. So it's very clear what the entity is that the column's coming from. So that's an important point. The second point is is you can have columns in different tables that have the same name. And so if you try to run a query referencing a column that has the same name in two tables and you don't explicitly specify which table you want, it's going to be ambiguous and you're going to end up getting an error back in your SQL query. So it's a good practice and a good habit to get into doing. So as a, as a quick recap for what we've done, Using our entity relationship diagram, 
we're able to determine how to join facility to patient. And we've written a simple query that joins the two tables together on those keys. Now I want to explore one other subject with you and that is how the join actually gets established and what the criteria is between the join. If we look at the schema for the facility table, we'll see that the data type of the facility primary key is an int. And if we look at the patient schema, we'll see that the facility foreign key is an int as well. As we join two, as we join columns together, it is the what you're going to find is that the data types are going to be the same. In fact, they have to be the same. The second thing I want to call your attention to is that the name, the process that runs your query, it could care less what the name is. The foreign key over here could be named Fred. The primary key over here could be named Barney. And as long as those are the two entities that make up the relationship, that's what we would join on. The only criteria that the query executor is really using is it's matching in syntax checking is it's matching the data types. It's saying, okay, you want me to join the patient facility foreign key on the facility facility primary key. So I want you to join on these two columns. It's going to check, are they the same data type? If they're not the same data type, you're going to get an error. If they're the same data type, it's going to make the join. But is it, a, it, but is it the correct join? So for example, I'm over here in the patient table. The patient primary key, it's an integer as well. What happens if I go and I change my query and I join patient PK to the facility table, to this column in the facility table. What what happens? <laughs> well, I get something back that, whoa, what's, what's, what's going on here? I get a totally different record set back. Well, what I've done is I've essentially joined apples to oranges. And so I'm getting back a bogus record set. And as we as we go and we we look, let's let's put back on these keys again. Whoop. And let's up oh, half K. Oh, <laughs> there we go. That's what it was. And run our query. We're no longer joining these two entities to one another. What we're joining is this column to this column. I'm sorry, we're not joining. Yeah, we're not joining these two columns together. What we're joining is this column to this column. And so if we go back and we look at the data set, we're joining this <laughs> to this which is giving us back this bogus record set. So it's very important that you understand and do the correct join. And how do you do that? You have a proper entity relationship diagram that tells you how to do that. All right, so that's all there is for this lesson. We're going to go into the third lesson, which is a real short lesson. And it's going to take you off into a whole series of hands-on activities. See you there. Bye.